In this video, we're going to take a look at points of inflection. The key to remembering how to find your points of inflection is knowing that you need your second derivative. All right, so we're going to start here by finding our first derivative. All right, it's a nice polynomial curve. So then this is just going to be a 20x to the third minus a 5x to the fourth. So pretty straightforward there. <clears throat> then we're going to go and find our second derivative. Again, polynomial curve, so pretty straightforward here. It's going to be a 60x squared minus 20x to the third. All right, at this point, you're going to take that second derivative, set it equal to zero to find your possible points of inflection. So then we'll have our 60x squared minus 20x to the third. We're going to set that equal to zero. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and factor out a greatest common factor. That'll be a 20 x to the second. Taking that out, we're going to be left with a 3 here, and then minus x. We'll set both of these equal to 0 because of the zero product principle. So here, x is going to be 0. Setting this equal to 0, we're going to have x equals 3. <clears throat> so at this point, these are possible points of inflection. All right, so now we're going to take a number line, and we're going to analyze these possible points of inflection. So we'll put zero on our number line, we will put three on our number line. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test in that second derivative and find out whether it is positive or negative, and then that will determine then what the original function is doing as far as concave up or concave down, and then that's going to determine which one is gonna be our points of inflection when we have a change there. So we wanna look here at the second derivative. All right, so rough estimate, you don't actually have to have an actual value here. If I take a negative number and I plug it in here, when I plug a negative in here, it's gonna be squared. If I plug a negative in, or I square it, it's gonna be positive. When I plug a negative number in here, it'll still be negative, so I'm gonna have plus plus. That's gonna make this overall answer greater than zero. All right, so rough estimate, you do not need the actual value. All right, when your second derivative is greater than zero, the function is concave up. <clears throat> now I'm going to pick a number in here. I'm probably just going to pick one inside there because that'll be really easy. That'll give me a 60 minus 20. So again, that's going to be positive greater than zero, which means my original function is going to be concave up again. Now picking a really large number here, a large positive number, all right, this will square it. It'll be positive overall, but now I'm going to cube that number, which is going to make it bigger. All right, multiplying by that 20. When I subtract there, I will have a negative number or less than zero. That's going to mean my original function is concave down. Now, we know that we have points of inflection whenever our concavity changes. So right here, it changes from concave up to concave down. So right there at x equals 3 is a point of inflection. So pretty straightforward Calc 1 topic here. A um, lot to remember, all right? And then also, you know, not making a mistake here when you're plugging into that second derivative. And then just understanding your rules when your concavity changes, you definitely have a point of inflection. All right, so definitely thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, please share with your friends so they can benefit too. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.